living is walking. In his exhortations to the Ephesians, Paul places in front of his readers two ways, the way of the Gentiles and the way of Christ. Welcome to another tidbit from the Bible. I'm Dr. Paul Peterson and in this series we are looking at Ephesians. We have arrived at the panetic part, the exhortations, the practical aspects of living as a Christian. We are in chapter 4 and we have come to verse 17. The section from verse 17 to verse 32 presents two ways. It's a practical session and let's begin by reading the old way, the way of the Gentiles in verse 17 to 19. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, we are reading from English Standard Version, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy, to practice every kind of impurity. Ignorance and greed are two main elements of the Gentile way of living. And then Paul moves on to the more positive aspect. What he has done here is reminding the Gentiles, the Gentile Christians, about their former life as it is already described in chapter 2, which we have seen earlier. But now he turns to the main point, verse 20 and 21. But that is not the way you learned Christ assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. The unique grammatical feature is that the object of the learning is the person, it is Christ. It is not that Paul is saying, this is not what you have learned about Christ. This is not the way, he says, you have learned Christ. This is the Christ way. Jesus Christ is the person to learn, to know, to become acquainted with. The way of Christ is therefore more than law. It is more than following the rules. It is imitating a person a person you have come to know as a person, a person with whom you have entered into a faith relationship. The Christian ethics has as its core the person of Jesus Christ. How often do we forget and replace Christ with rules and regulations and there are boundaries in the Christian ethics no doubt but Christ is himself the way. Paul then moves on and in this section that follows you have here in these verses from 22 to 24 the center of this part of uh, his Parnassus this part of his exhortation in the whole letter. Verse 22 to 24. To put off your old self, which belongs to the former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Notice that there is here a reverse parallel. There is a putting off in verse 22, there's a putting on in 24. And in the center, 
you have what you could say the center of the whole section here and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. But let's first look at this idea of putting off and on the man, the old man, the new man, the self. We may get the impression from our way of language that this is just an external thing as you put on and put off clothing. That would be a misunderstanding. It was in the Hellenistic world a common expression for a transformed moral life. It is certainly more than just an, an external event. It is something that takes root in the basic character of a person. It is a transition from being unenlightened to being enlightened. Now, in the center you have the sentence, be renewed in the spirit of your minds. To the Christian, in the teachings of Paul, this renewal comes from outside of yourself. It is created by the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. It's not from inside. It comes from you being enlightened by knowing Christ. And it changes you and me from ignorance and greed to knowing Christ and to an unselfish ideal for our practical life. That is the change from the way of the Gentiles to the way of Christ. And as Paul continues in the remainder of the chapter, verses 25 to 32, he gives a list of five practical direct exhortations. Let's read them and comment on each one of them. Verse 25, you have the first one. Therefore, having putting away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. This is the basic motivation that Paul gives the Christians, referring back to the fact that the church is one body. It's the body of Christ. Christ is the head. We are then the members. So what we do, we do in consideration for other members of the body of Christ, because this is the Christ way. The second exhortation of the five we find in verse 26 and 7. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Paul is here quoting from Psalm 4. And... The, the fact is that we may be taken in by anger. That's human. But the advice is don't nourish it. Don't respond to it. Be calm. Because if you respond to the anger, you are giving the devil an opportunity. The third exhortation in verses in verse 28, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Now, you would imagine that this is a fairly uh, straightforward and simple exhortation, and it is. Of course, you should not steal, but notice the motivation. The motivation is unselfishness, doing honest work so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Remember, one basic feature of the early Christian church was their sharing what they had. They're coming together in the homes, sharing meals also with those who had nothing. This is the Christ way. In verses 29 and 30, we then have the fourth exhortation. 
Let no corrupting thought talk come out of your mouth, but only such is as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And here Paul is uh, pointing back to what he said in the opening praise to God about the Holy Spirit being your down payment, your guarantee, your seal of the final day of redemption. But notice once again, the motivation is unselfish. That what you talk may give grace to those who hear. Not only sharing what you have earned with others, but also in your words, following the Christ way, being unselfish, being a blessing to others. The fifth and final exhortation, let all bitterness, from verse 31, and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. And this is like a summing up. Along with all malice, be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Once again, the motivation is self unselfish. But here you also find the great motivation for living in the Christ way. What Christ has done for you. Forgive one another as he has forgiven you. Be merciful to one another as he has been merciful to you. That is the Christ way. Paul has moved from theology to practice, from teaching to life, from the grand narrative of salvation to walking the Christian life. From, you could say, Haggadah, the narrative, the story, to Halakha, to walking. Walking the Christ way imitating Christ, being inspired and motivated by Christ, far more than rules and regulations. It's a personal relationship with your Saviour, reflected in the way you live your life in relationship to those people that he also died to save. Thank you for listening to this tidbit from Ephesians, and welcome back as we continue our reading.